Now, Todd, is God finished with America? I mean, we look at the whole list of national sins that our, our viewing audience is very familiar with. Take just abortion. Tens of millions of babies have been murdered. But the list goes on and on with sexual perversion and corruption and human trafficking. Are we past the point of no return as a nation? Absolutely not. I really believe, Bob, that America still has the potential to return to the Lord and to experience a great awakening. I'm not giving up on this country. I believe God founded this nation with the Judeo-Christian ethic that we have as the pillar of our society. And God loves this nation. Is it perfect? No. Are there problems? Absolutely. Do we need to make some corrections in some things? Yeah, you bet. But I believe that America's greatest hour can be, now that's, that's the word, can be in front of us. But, you know, if you take an honest look at society, we've lost a lot of ground. Uh, the morality, uh, we're in a post-Christian era. But I believe the church has the potential to steer America back to God so that it could stand up again in righteousness and in purity. So I think the verse or the scripture that most Christians are familiar with is Second Chronicles 7, 14. We hear it over and over and over again, and I'm going to read it. Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. So again, we've heard this scripture over and over and people have been praying, but it's very interesting that God's talking to his people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and calling them to humility, prayer, seeking his face, turning from their wicked ways. Yep. It's really God talking to the church. Mm -hmm. So let, let's take the example of, of Sodom and Gomorrah, because people, it's been said, well, if, if God doesn't judge America, he's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. But what happened with Sodom and Gomorrah shows God's heart. Yes. Explain that. Yeah, God wants uh, to bring revival, awakening. He wants healing. He wants peace. He, he doesn't get excited about bringing judgment. And God was willing to spare an entire perverted nation, bestiality, homosexuality, mm. all types of murder, thievery going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. But God said, I will spare it if I could just find 10 righteous people. So it's not that God is waiting on the edge of heaven to zap America because of you know, its callousness and its rebellion. God wants to save America and every nation because he loves people. Now you mentioned Bob, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, and everybody loves that verse. You know, that's our hope verse. That's our go-to right. verse for our, our nation. But God pointedly looks at the church, his people, if my people, Mm -hmm. And we love forgive our sin and heal our land part of that scripture. Sure. Don't we? I mean, we love it. That, yeah. That's the scripture. Yeah, he's going to heal our land and he's going to forgive our sin. But there are four major things that the church must do in order for God to heal our land and to forgive our sin. First of all, humble yourself. There's a lot of pride in the church. There's a lot of pride with the people of God. We've looked at our prosperity as the blessings of the Lord, and it has caused us to get uh, kind of loose in our morals. Mm -hmm. We've become loose in our convictions and our standards. And so whatever will be, will be. But God says, if my people will humble themselves, and then he says, if my people will humble themselves and pray, this is the most difficult part of a pastor's life, a church life, is to get the people of God to pray. And yeah, God's, prayer meetings are not usually as well attended no, they're as not. regular services. I mean, you can get people to come to a dinner, a concert, a conference, right. a deliverance session, and obviously a prophetic speaker. They'll pack the building out. Sure. But as soon as the leaders say, we're going to do a prayer meeting once a week for an hour, 
Mm. All of a sudden, people get real busy <laughs> and they find things to do yeah. or they think, well, that's yeah. not for me or that's not necessary. Right. But isn't it interesting that God said, if my people, not the heathens, not the drunkard, not the adulterer, not the perverted individual, but he said, if my people will humble themselves, nose down, knees, mm. Uh, literally seeking, seeking God. If my people humble themselves and pray, not just pray, but pray. You pray until you get an answer. You pray till you get a breakthrough. And then he said, Bob, he said, if they'll seek my face, I'll never forget, even as a pastor, uh, before the revival broke out, God revealed to me that I had lost the face of God. Mm. I was preaching, I was counseling, I was parenting, I was leading, I was consulting, my church was good, but I had lost the face of God. And it is possible that the people of God can be so surrounded by the blessings of the Lord mm. that we lose his face. So familiar with his hand, with his blessings and lose his face. And when I sought the face of God in our church turned and said, God, we don't need anything else from you. We're not asking you to bless us. We're not asking you to, to heal us. We're not asking you to prosper us, but Lord, we're coming after your face. And when our church that is now experiencing three years of revival, continuous revival, over 16,000 people baptized, mm. untold thousands of miracles happening in our baptismal waters. It all came because we practiced Second Chronicles 7:14. Mm -hmm. We humbled ourselves. We walked into the sanctuary face down and we said, God, we're going to pray and then we're going to seek your face. Now, here's the hard part that God says, I'll heal the land. I'll heal America. I'll change this land but my church has got to turn from sin. Hmm. This is where the dividing line happens in the churches because there's a grace message, a sloppy grace message that has enabled people to maintain lifestyles that are literally opposing the very oracles and the principles of God. And we say grace covers all. Grace is not a license to sin, but it is a power to stop sinning. And when preachers and pastors and leaders begin to say, we need to repent of our rebellion, hardness of heart, our carnality, our marginalness, if you will, mm -hmm. that's when God says, I'm coming and I'll heal the land. But it starts first, Bob, in the house of the Lord. We want the healing. We want the forgiveness. But literally, it's in our court. Well, let's address this question real quickly. Does God still judge nations today? I believe he does. I really do. And I, I, I believe that America is, is in line to be judged. I, I do. I do. Um, but there's hope. <laughs> there's opportunity. God is giving. Now, here's what I believe. Conviction very strongly. God is giving the church not the political leaders, okay? Not those in the House of Congress, not those mayors and city councilmen and councilwomen. He's giving the church the opportunity to bring America back to greatness. Hmm. But the church has made the mistake, I feel, that we've looked to political leaders to fix our problems. Mm -hmm. We've looked to people in office and we need to vote. We need to be active politically. But Washington cannot get us out of this fix. Right. We, as the people of God, are the hope for America. I love the quote that said, you know, the church is plan A for America, and there's not a plan B. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've just come through a season, Todd, that's just, it's been bruising politically. Mm -hmm. and, and there's actually political division even within the church. How, how do you as a pastor address that? And, and what would you say to somebody who's just been through this political season and, and they're kind of jaded now, Christians, and like, I don't even know if I want to vote anymore, or participate anymore. I'm just, you know, let me just go live my life and I'm giving up. What would you say to them? Well, first I would say our moral compass is not our, is not our feelings. It's not the, uh, the whims of society of where the mass dictates what's right or what's wrong. And we as the church 
we've been guilty of just flowing with what the culture wants. You know, we don't want to be too harsh. We don't want to be too controversial. We just want to stay in the middle, not make anybody feel convicted. We just simply just want to present a very palatable gospel. Well, our moral compass is not society. It's not their convictions. It is the Word of God. And the man and woman of God that's standing behind those sacred desks must preach the uncompromising, infallible, inerrant Word of God. And we have to say what the Bible says is wrong. Our convictions, our voting has to be based upon the Word, not our feelings, Hmm. not the rights of people, but what God says. So we are really responsible for who's in office. The evangelical vote in America is enormous, Mm. but the statistics are saying that there were so many millions of evangelicals that stayed home this Mm. voting cycle. We had the opportunity to put the right people in office that share our convictions and our morals, not perfect people, but many people just failed to vote. Mm. And now we have what we have. Mm. Well, Todd, we're gonna take a break right there. Uh, When we come back, we're going to find out the most dangerous segment of society in America. The answer is probably going to surprise you. Let's come come right back in just a moment. Welcome back to Something More. I'm here with Todd Smith. So, Todd, before we went to the break, we, we were talking about who is the most dangerous segment of society. So, so who is it? Is it terrorists? Is it gang leaders? Is it corrupt officials? Who, who is it? It's going to surprise you, Bob. It's the church. The church. The church. Okay. That, that is a surprise. <laughs> and in, in fact, yes. uh, in, in your book, and I want to read this word for word because it really covers it. And the answer is a fearful, unmotivated, consumer-based, sleeping, convenience-seeking, untrained, offended, carnal, lukewarm, lazy, entitled, unholy, and prayerless church. Ouch. Yes. (laughs) But it's true. That describes the body of Christ at large. And I know I'm speaking in generalities because there are some really red-hot, revival-centered churches that uh, are experiencing a move of God. But by and large, in America, the church is this. It's unmotivated, it's entitled, it's consumer-based. Come bless me, tell me how great I am. We're not living holy lives. This right here, I believe to be the most dangerous segment of society. Sinners are gonna do what sinners do. Sure, yeah. Murderers are gonna kill. There's going to be abortion. There's going to be drug addictions. There's going to be all of these type of things. I believe judgment's coming to America when it comes, not because of sinners doing what sinners do. Okay, they do it all over the world. God understands that. But He has placed His church to be the light of the world, to be that city on a hill. And because we are backslidden, because we are prayerless, Because we're marginal, carnal, in our walk with Jesus, society is escalating into deeper and deeper darkness, okay? The most dangerous segment to our society is a church that's unmotivated. Mm. I believe that with all my heart. Because as the church goes, so goes society. I tell people all the time, the most important individual in the city, in any city in America, is not the, uh, excuse me, not the mayor, It's not the city council people. It's the man or woman of God leading the local churches. Because if a church gets on fire for God and it becomes a hub of revival, a place of where the glory of God falls, families from that community will come and converge to experience a move of God. And then they get their hearts right. And when a daddy gets right and a mother gets right, guess what? The home gets right. And when the home gets right, our schools get right. When the schools get right, our businesses get right. The most valuable person in a community is the man and woman of God and the elders and the deacons and the leaders of those local churches. 
the fate of America, I'll never forget what God spoke to me, Bob. Mm -hmm. The fate of America rests on the shoulders of the church. It is literally in the hands of the church. And, and I really believe that our pastors need to understand the severity of this and our pulpits need to understand that the hope of America lies within the hands of the church. So when the church gets it right, everything else falls into place. That's basically what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So how do we get the church right? How do we get from here to there? And, and uh, we can look at your church in particular because one of the things you share about is moving from a place of just visitations with God mm -hmm. to a place of constant habitation. Mm -hmm. You've experienced both. Yes, sir. And with your church now mm -hmm. in revival, you're in a place of, of habitation mm -hmm. with God and seeing miracles happen, seeing all kinds of good fruit come from that. So how can we as individuals and as churches get there, get to that same place of habitation? That is a beautiful question. Far too long, our lives have been about the visitation of the Lord. Lord, visit me. Lord, come and help me. Lord, get me through this problem. But God's no longer interested in coming to our homes, our lives, and also in our churches, just visiting us. And then after the visit, we go to live our lives like we need to, or we want to, or however independent of God. God's looking for a glorious habitation, mm -hmm. but the conditions have to be right. right. God is attracted to certain environments, right? He loves cultures that are conducive to host Him. Mm -hmm. I say this all the time, and, and, and it really dis, it, it causes people to get uncomfortable. When people say, are you praying for an awakening of America? Hmm. Are you praying for revival in America? And my answer is no, I'm not. Hmm. But here's how I pray. Hmm. I am praying for pastors and the pulpits to get awakened. Hmm. Because if our pulpits and our pastors get awakened, everything from there, it flows from the head down. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Because yeah. when pastors get awakened, they weep before the Lord. They seek the face of God. They're praying before the Lord. Their nose is on the carpet crying out, not for just a visitation in a good church service on Sunday, but, oh, God, would you come in all of your perfect holiness and righteousness and invade my life, invade my pulpit and invade my church. It is at that moment, as I said earlier, that if the pulpits get right, mm -hmm. America gets right. If the Absolutely. men and women of God that are leading us, mm -hmm. then it will sweep across this great land of ours and we will have a revival that leads to a great awakening. And then when we have this awakening, our politics get right as well. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk, Todd, to the person who's watching right now. And, and hopefully they're saying, yes, that's what I want. I have a hunger for that. That's it. I want to be a place of habitation for God, for His glory to flow through my mm -hmm. life. What can they do as an individual? What should they be doing? Oh, that is, that is beautiful. Here's what, I, here's what I would say. I believe it is very clear. There's no formula to revival personally and in your home. There's no formula, but there's a pathway. It begins with seeking the face of God. That's the primary issue, seeking the face of God. David, the most prosperous man on the planet, he had the greatest army, the wealthiest person on earth. And God reminded him, David, seek my face. And David responded, oh God, your face will I seek. My heart says to you. We as a people of God have got to get back to seeking not the hands of the Lord, not the blessings of God, not the healings of the Lord, but His face. And I discovered, Bob, that when I captured His face, I got everything in His hand. Mm. The second thing that I believe that is necessary to have the habitation of God come into your life, in your home, your church, your business, God is attracted to brokenness. Mm. He looks to the brokenness of individuals. He said, if you'll come to me with a contrite and broken spirit, he said, I'll not despise it. Isaiah says, I'll revive the heart of the broken. 
I asked the Lord one day, I said, God, I want more glory in my life. I want more of your kabod, the heaviness that comes from you, that miracles and signs and wonders flow from. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me, Bob, and he says, then Todd, increase your brokenness. Hmm. The more broken I am as an individual, the more attractive I am to God. It's kind of an inversion. We want, we want wholeness. We want mm -hmm. confidence. We, you know, we want that, right. that, that ability to say, I'm strong. But God says, the weaker I am in front of Him, that the more I'm able to hold of His glory and His presence. So it's right here. We repent of our sins. We look at ourselves in His holiness, His purity, His righteousness. We don't measure up. And I'm not talking about condemnation. I'm not talking about the spirit of where you just feel filled with, you're full of shame. But I'm looking at myself as I really am, as Isaiah did. And he says, whoa, I'm a man that's undone. I'm seeing this perfect per, uh, picture of holiness, Jesus on this throne. And he's high and he lifted up and he says, I'm undone. I have unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of people that are unclean as well. If we get back to this point, God moves into your home, your life, and your church. That's what's attracting God to the North Georgia Revival. Yeah. It's not talent. It's not the mm. preaching. It's not our skill set. It's not the lights. It's not the haze, mm. the fog, you know, that we, that we put in our stage. Oh, God's here. We put on a concert. No, God's looking for one thing. The more broken you are before Him, weeping before Him, loving Him, and saying, Lord, I will run from sin. I will hate everything that you hate. God says, I'm attracted to that. Todd, real quickly, pray for that viewer right now that says, that's what I want. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you're moving all across the world right now and you're stirring the hearts of individuals. Lord, you are calling them to a deeper walk with you. And it's not the knowledge, Lord, that we just need to keep acquiring more knowledge, but God, it is that tenderness, that brokenness. And I pray in Jesus' name that will be released all across the world right now. Amen. And if you belong to Messiah Jesus, it's, it's time, it's time to press in and seek His face, seek His glory. And that means, like Todd's been talking, prayer, it means yielding yourself, it means brokenness. But oh, the benefits that come with hosting His presence. And if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, boy, this is the time. Don't let another day go by. And join us again next time for something more. Call now and get Todd Smith's two brand new anointed books, Creating a Habitation for God's Glory, and his 70-day devotional book, Igniting Revival Fire Every Day, and his powerful audio CD, Pathways to God's Glory. It's exclusive for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9726. You will receive Todd Smith's brand new book, Creating a Habitation for God's Glory. You will learn how to shift from revival visitation to Holy Spirit habitation, where God's manifest glory presence rests upon you with power. Become a carrier of God's holy fire, where you will supernaturally impact the atmosphere around you. Cultivate and sustain a lifestyle saturated in God's presence and power to experience spiritual breakthroughs, healings, and miracles. Position yourself for supernatural setups and divine appointments. You will also receive Todd Smith's anointed 70-day devotional book, Igniting Revival Bible fire every day. Todd Smith has assembled powerful Holy Spirit filled devotionals by top revival leaders featuring 70 powerful and anointed daily mini chapters. This book will ignite your heart daily to go deeper into your relationship with God usher you into fresh encounters with the Holy Spirit. Help bring the glory presence of God in revival into your heart, into your marriage, to your children, your church, your community. Plus, you will receive Todd Smith's powerful audio CD, Pathways to God's Glory. On this audio CD, you will hear five testimonies from people who found the pathway to God's glory by applying Todd Smith's teachings. The glory of God will transform you into the person God's called you to be. Experience breakthroughs, healings, and the miracles you need to become invincible to the enemy. Achieve God's destiny for your life. Don't miss out on getting Todd Smith's two brand new 
anointed books, Creating a Habitation for God's Glory, and his 70-day devotional book, Igniting Revival Fire Every Day, and his powerful audio CD, Pathways to God's Glory. It's exclusive for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9726. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9726 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today.